Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're taking our EMF detection levels to the next level. This is right, this is a full pro grade EMF meter. It records up to eight gigahertz of frequency and it comes in this, you know, 007 kind of box. All right, so this one comes in from Canada. Oh, Canada, my favorite place to go. This is the Latinx HF B8G Professional High Quality RF Meter. Bom, ba -dom, ba -dom. Feel like James Bond with this guy. <laughs> Check it out, this is the Latinx Calibration Certificate. So it's been fully calibrated, goes up to eight gigahertz. Ontario Canada from EMR Solutions. Our team is committed to providing the best customer service possible. Any problems, ask them. Check out the link in the description below if you wanna find out more. And as you can see, this is a beef boy, proper, proper. Look at that, I don't wanna touch it too much. Has a calibration certificate. Wireless LAN detections, installations, spy cameras, wireless bug finders, mobile phones, radiation safety levels. Look at this baby. Oh la la. This is a tool, this is a, this is like all my other cool tools I've got over here in the office. Looks like a proper beast of an animal. So you plug the ports, make sure the pins go in the right configuration. So you can see that this doesn't have a gap and this doesn't have a gap. So you plug it in like that. And then you screw this in to make sure it's nice and tight. Big with small and small with big. Straight away, we're getting some detections. And this is a millivolt per meter squared. This is amps per meter squared. And this is my favorite, this is microwatts per meter squared. So first up, simple test. When I put my wireless microphone, if I put it on the unprotected side, see that it shoots up to 20 milliwatts per meter squared. And when I put it on the protected side, See, it drops down to five milliwatts per meter squared. So it is doing some detection. And we're just gonna go round the Gold Coast to let you guys know how much gigahertz we can actually detect. Previously, I've been using this guy. This guy only gets up to three and a half gigahertz of frequency. And we all know that frequencies nowadays are a lot higher than that. But most of the 5G over here is actually less than that. So hopefully this eight gigahertz will get a lot of frequencies that we currently miss. For example, my AC Wi-Fi router Exclude the room. If I go on my little guy over here, the only way I can detect this guy's radiation levels is if I switch it to 2.4 gigahertz. But right now, when it's on AC Wi-Fi, five gigahertz, I'm getting a bit close to it. And the manual says I should be 20 centimeters away from it, at least. Which, if you look into the official user guide of the manual of most routers, you'll find that they have an FCC RF statement stating that the antennas should provide a separation distance of at least 20 centimeters. And I don't know if you can see this, but when it's right next to the aerial, it's on zero. It cannot detect that frequency. So this guy is useless for anything above three and a half gigahertz. Whereas this guy, the big guy, putting it right here. So right now it's 50 microwatts and occasionally every now and then it shoots up two milliwatts. But of course, if I grab my mobile phone and I'd run a speed test over Wi-Fi, we can see that this area is shooting up and look at that, we're transferring in this area, we've got milliwatts, 60 to 100 milliwatts per meter squared of energy is being transferred. That's on the download and on the upload, we're getting over 100 to 60 again, transferring the Wi-Fi from here to here in this area. And look at that, it drops down the further away you go. So you can do some really cool experiments to find out how much radiation is being transported in the area. And what's great to find out is when you're not transferring data from the phone to the Wi-Fi router, the radiation levels are low. I just found that out for the first time in my life using 5G. Previously, I had to detect it on 2.4, but on 5 gigahertz. But when you do start uploading and downloading, that's when all the waves are traveling through your area. It's pretty cool. Seems to be working logically. I tried a previous 8 gigahertz meter before and it was giving me some random results so this one seems promising i'm going to go around the house and show you some common items and just show you the kind of radiation that comes out of them so first we want to see uh, this mobile phone what is going on with this guy so i'm going to turn him off his screen and with the screen currently off he's still shooting out 50 milliwatts per meter squared so what i'll do is i'll put him in airplane mode and on airplane mode, it just drops st straight to microwatts. So there's nothing being emitted from this fella. So on 4G, 
you can see that it gets 40 milliwatts per meter squared from a distance of around 10 centimeters. Turn the screen off. And it's dropped to 10 milliwatts per meter squared. So straight away learn with the screen off, you get 10 milliwatts per meter squared. Still, you know, depends on your, you know, decision making. Most people say that you shouldn't be getting that much right next to your uh, trousers. The United States magazine Consumer Reports recently recommended that nobody keep a phone in their pocket. Nobody. And in fact, if phones were tested in pockets, they would exceed the as-tested exposure guidelines, which is why Telstra is telling you to use a hands-free device to keep a mobile phone away from the head and body. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off mobile data like that, and then I'll make a phone call. So most of the radiation levels that are coming from your phone are purely data, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mobile data, 4G, 3G, that kind of stuff. But general phone calls, they're very, very low comparatively, according to this meter. Let's go around and find out what other devices, how they compare. So first up, let's, uh, let's go to the fridge. Everyone's excited about fridges. So right now behind me, we got a beautiful Samsung French door fridge. It is completely on. It doesn't have that smart Wi-Fi stuff. I deliberately bought a model without Wi-Fi. I don't know why, why you need a fridge with Wi-Fi. Make sure it's on when I'm outside. Like, <laughs> if you've already gone outside and you left the door open, it's too late. Like, you know, you wanna hear the alarm before you go outside. Anyway, see I'm right next to the fridge and it's completely nothing is happening outside here. Uh, let's go right to our favorite device, the microwave. And this is a microwave oven. So I'm gonna get a cup of water. Put it inside. Now when the microwave is off, you can see, well, it's barely nothing. Zero, zero coming out of this fella. But when we turn it on, see that from this distance, we're getting 300, 360 milliwatts per meter squared. And according to the WHO guidelines, this is the acceptable level for a microwave when it's operating. So I'm right next to the microwave and look at it, 300 to 400 milliwatts per meter squared. All right, there you go. Right there, 450 <laughs> milliwatts meter squared. So if you look on the WHO's website, the World Health Organization in public exposure limits, maximum public safety exposure, it has microwaves to go up to 0.5 watts, which is 500 milliwatts. So I'd say there's no leaks coming out of this microwave based on these readings. Of course, if it was higher, then you be, should be concerned. Thanks for the cup of water. I'm gonna turn it on again, but this time put it a bit further away. And now I'm about two meters away and the levels are now around 20 milliwatts per meter squared. And I have to be even further. <laughs> and from about five meters away, I'm still getting around, just around between two to 30 milliwatts per meter squared. So pretty much when the microwave is op in operation, it's just firing beams around the house. Don't stay close to the microwave when it's in operation. That's right, the FDA of the USA, they say, do not stand near the microwave oven for long periods of time. All right, so now we're gonna do some cool stuff. We're gonna jump in the car, test the car, as well as go to these beautiful cell towers and let you know how much 5G is coming out of these 5G cell towers.